Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today. Today I'm going to be doing an update on that, my nine gallon Fluval Flex back there, fully planted tank. I will also be doing a live stream on Instagram later on today. So if you guys are watching this, this is actually for May 13th, the 13th day of May Madness. But if you guys are watching this and you haven't yet followed me on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I do live streams, I post daily pictures, and I interact with you guys as much as possible. So if you haven't done that, do so. But in this video, we're going to enjoy showing you my green oasis back there. This is my Fluva Flex. It has not been cleaned, but I'll take care of that real quick. All right, we're back. A significantly cleaner tank, which is nice. Uh, there is some bubble accumulation up here, but I guess I should kind of explain what's going on with this tank in the first place. This is the Fluval 9-gallon flex, as you guys can see. Maybe from the side is a bit easier to see. But basically what happened is my lid, the light stopped working because this model was the one that wasn't totally water sealed. And it seemed like water got into the light and basically just fried it. So what I did was, this is actually a lid for one of the tanks that I built. And I didn't use it, so I use it for this. Now it is the lid to prevent evaporation from the tank. It does actually a really good job. There is still some gas exchange right there. And then up here, you guys might know or recognize... The Fluval 3.0 Nano. The Fluval 3.0 Nano is a really awesome light. You can essentially control it by going to their app and simply touching on the light itself. You can see now that it kind of dimmed down because it's like, oh, it's nighttime. But you can change all the different values. You can go into manual mode and I have it totally set for on, but you can control no red, no blue, just change everything to cool white. But we don't like that, so we just turn everything up, and then it's more of like a natural light setting. So now that we've covered the general kind of lighting for the tank, it's super basic, really. It's just the Fluval 3.0 Nano. Uh, we can go to the back here, and I'm not gonna like rip apart my filter or anything, but I do have K1 Media. Um, it's supposed to be in a fluidized bed, but it seems to do a decent job just sitting there. <laughs> Unless it's literally all the medium filter that's doing that, but I'm pretty sure the K1 media is doing really well as well. So that is the filtration for the tank. One of the reasons why I love this tank so much is because it's an all-in-one system. There's no hang on the back filter. There's nothing of the sort. It's all what you see is what you get. And if the lid worked, that would be nice, but they did fix that in newer models, so that's kind of nice. Um, it's just one of my models that, <laughs> that it didn't work out so well on. Something that I'm sure you guys all will want to know is the species of plants and the species of fish that are in the tank. So I'll let you know the stocking we have up top. It's kind of hard to film just because these guys are all wanting to be fed. And the reflection is rough. But you guys can see up there. We have a Pseudomogul Sinifer. Uh, it's one of the dwarf Australian rainbow fish. And then we also have some purple Rasboras. The uh, Harlequin Rasboras. In addition to that, you guys can see chowing down on those rocks right there. Is a, a mono shrimp. Uh, I believe there's two of them in there. And then while he's out, back there... If the camera focuses, maybe not. Right there, you guys can see one of three. Go on, dude, turn around. <laughs> okay, fine. You guys can see one of three of the peacock gudgeons that I just recently added. They've maybe been in the tank for like two weeks, two and a half weeks, something like that. I have two males and one female. Uh, this is one of the males, I do believe. And then the other male and the female have kind of paired off. And I think the female is loaded with eggs, but they basically hide in this area, I suppose. They hide in under all the Busa there. 
and I think that's where they're probably going to lay their eggs. Not 100% sure yet, but I have a, a strange feeling that's where they're going to lay. I don't think I have anything else. Oh, no, that's not true. I do have... You guys can't see... Uh, here, I'll see if I can whip my phone out and show you the... You can see back there, maybe? on the rock you guys can't oh there you go it's right in the dead center of your screen uh, I do have assassin snails in here so that's what that guy is just chilling back there they are nocturnal so they only come out at nighttime but just kind of a go around of the whole tank up front here with this is helianthum tenelum um, it's basically just like a similar to a valve species that grows via runner so it shoots off little new branches and grows that way. It stays really low as you can see. Right behind it we have Pogostamon helferi and then that plant right on my fingertip right there is Stargani repens. This is my Cranthamum Monte Carlo. You can just see how well it's doing. This is a low-tech tank. There's no CO2 injections. I don't dose and I use the Tropica Aquarium soil and I set it up about two years ago now. Maybe a year and a half, something like that. And then there's no real new plants back there. Because it's right next to my bed, I do look at it from that angle. So I wanted to keep in mind when I was setting up the tank that I'd be looking at it from two separate angles. And you guys can see, it looks nice from the side as well as from the front. I think that's an important lesson for people to take is that you gotta keep in mind where your tank is and how you're going to be viewing it. If this is gonna be in your living room and it's just a standard rectangular tank, then you might just wanna face it and scape it so you can see it from one angle. However, like I said before, because my bed is right there and that is where I sleep, I do see it from both angles. And so I made it look really nice. I made it have a lot of 3D dimension coming from the back of the tank, the background back there, all the way up to the foreground right here. So I kept in mind a lot of different things uh, when I was setting up this tank. I really wanted to make it look nice and uh, I was inspired by George Farmer, Oliver Knott, and those guys, the, the, the king aquascapers out there to set this tank up. I think it's done pretty good so far. To be honest, the reason why it doesn't look any better is just because I don't really put that much time into maintenance. Because I work at a pet store, uh, doing a whole bunch of maintenance on this tank is just not my favorite thing because, as you might be able to tell, I am looking after fish tanks all day. And coming home and doing more scrubbing and stuff is just something that I don't necessarily want to do. Uh, the rest of the plant species, because I know I'll get yelled at for, <laughs> for not uh, saying them, this is a Anubius Petite. And then there's two different kinds of Bucephalandra, or Bucephalandra, I think it's Bucephalandra. Um, there's the green, the wavy green, and the Bucephalandra species red. Those are the two. At the back, it's more of the Anubius Petite. Oh, I guess I'll say the hardscaping material that I use, if you guys haven't seen the video, uh, I'll leave it at the beginning as a card so you guys can go check it out. But um, if you just search on my channel, Fluval Flex, it will come up. I did make an in-depth video of me setting it up, and this is the uh, dragon stone that I used to set it up. So that's what the hardscape is. And then this is, I think it's uh, Amazon wood, something like that. To be honest, I can't totally remember. I really hope I covered all the stuff that is kind of important with this tank. If you guys go back and see how this tank looked when I first set it up versus what it looks like now, it's a completely different beast. I really, really like the tank. Uh, I think it's super soothing. I'll just lie in my bed for like 20, 30 minutes when I wake up, look at the fish, feed them, and uh, go about my day. So it's a really nice way to wake up. I don't find the filter too loud. I actually really like the sound of running water. So I guess if you don't like the sound of running water, then it's probably not best to have it right next to your bed. But if you're like me, it's something that I would strongly recommend. To cap off this video, I do want to feed the fish. Uh, I do want to say that I do use the Northfin Community Pellets. Uh, this is the 0.5 millimeter. Everything in here can eat them really, really well. Anything that hits the bottom is then devoured by the shrimp, so I'm not too worried about overfeeding or anything like that. 
My feeding schedule is typically I feed only every two to three days, um, but I do feed quite a bit. So that's something that you guys will see here very shortly. What I like to do, there's a little hole back here and I just drop in a bunch of pellets and we watch them go nuts. And then we just hope that the peacock gudgeon also gets some Peacock gudgeons, gudgeon, I don't know. I'm not sure what the plural would be. Just try not to blind you guys by shining the whole light in front of your face. And I'll drop some at the very front of the tank, just with hopes that it drops into the tank and they can get some. Yeah, it looks like they went after it. Even got the attention of one of the other ones right there in the middle of the screen. And that's what I feed the tank. I feed them one pinch every two to three days and that's what they get. A couple times a week, I do use um, some frozen fruit, some frozen uh, callinus, I think it's called. I, I don't actually remember what it's called. It's I don't have it right in front of me, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. But uh, that's typically what I feed when I just want to give them a little bit of variation because they're fish and I think mixing up their diet is an important thing so so that's gonna wrap up my video of the Fluval Flex 9 gallon I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys watched the whole video I know there's quite a few of you that really really like this tank and I do agree I think it looks great and I cannot wait to set up more tanks unfortunately the problem is is that I just don't have room anywhere in my room for more tanks this is for the Euro babies I'll be setting this up right after this video, actually. So you'll see how I actually take care of the baby euros that recently hatched for me. I, I would love to set up tanks. I think it'd be cool to do like commissions and stuff, set up tanks for clients. I'm just not on that grind quite yet. I think it'll get there eventually, but got to build up my repertoire. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click that like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, leave it in the comment section. And if you want to see more of my aquariums, maybe some aquariums at work I could go in and film, uh, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know. Click that like button in support of that as well. And if you want to see more reptiles, all of May Madness, there's still like 18 days left in May Madness. So if you guys are interested in subscribing and seeing daily content from me and some of my friends, definitely click that subscribe button and play Ding Dong Ditch with the doorbell next to it. That way you get notified every time I post a video. We'll catch you tomorrow for a Q&A Tuesday. Later.